Okay. Amen. Today, we're going to stretch to marriage bus stop two. What if I missed my boss? What if I've missed it? Or what if I missed my boss? Last month, in the Singles and Marriage Forum program, we started this topic, this general topic, marriage bus stops. So today, people ask questions. What if I have missed my boss? Because they have come to the realization that this person I'm living with now is not actually, I can, you don't need any other prophet. This one is not actually the one that I should be living with. I am so sure of it that I've made a mistake. So that is, because when we talk about bosses, we're talking about human beings. We're talking, we're going to explain that. So, so uh, in marriage, we're talking about the person that is supposed to be getting married with. All right, so uh, what if I have missed my boss? Pastor, what do you talk about? What are you going to say? And maybe I'm not in marriage. What if I've missed my boss? So I'm already married with a person. What if I've missed my boss? So this is what we're looking at today. And uh, both sides, we're going to give answers to the questions and I expect you to ask your questions. If you also have your com comments you can, or your contributions, you can add. And then so that people out there will be blessed. All right. From our first teaching in the Marriage Boss Stops 1, as in general introduction, was we'll said that the Almighty God has positioned different buses at different bus stops of life. That's where the topic came from. Different bus stops of life to take us from one destination to another. So it follows that a major reason people have different problems in life is because of missed buses. That's what we said in the last in last month, sometime last month. Remember that, like I said, that these buses we are talking about are human beings. They are events. They are activities, opportunities, and so on. Both the good ones and the bad ones. Listen, both the good ones and the bad ones. You know, sometimes we run away from the bad things, from the bad human beings. Let me tell you, from the day I got to know that those who hate me, those who walk against me, those who try to kill me, those who want to imprison me, those who want to kill me, do everything, they are part of God's plan and God's purpose. They are part of God's idea. They are the part of God's gifts. I use that word. God's gift to me to become what he has programmed me to be. I now started seeing life from a very different, new and better perspective. And I'm telling you right now, try and understand that both the good and bad opportunities, both the good and bad human beings, everything, everything, or those who are good and let, let that turn to bad, mm -hmm. all of them are part of divine program. Exactly. The idea, the idea, the idea. The gift of God to take you to your divine destination in life. Now let's go. Before we're able to provide answer, to the question on grant. The question on grant is, what if I've missed my boss? What if I've missed my boss? That's the question on grant. So, what, so before we're able to provide answer to this question, we need to explain a few things. Few things, three of them. Number one, why is, what's it, three things. Why is it that people actually miss their bosses? Why is it that people miss their bosses in life? We need to know before ever we provide answers and then you will flow with us. So why is it that people miss their bosses? And I said there are three things we're going to look at. Number one is belief system. What you believe is what works for you. If you believe wrongly, it is a problem. Now, but if you have believed rightly before, at a time you decided to walk out of, outside that you are right belief, you now said, oh, this thing is delayed. You wanted to try the other one. That is even another bigger problem. So your belief system is what works, is, is a very important <laughs> fact here. What do you believe? Now, let me give you a little example. Some people believe that, oh, God gives me my own wife. God gives me my own husband. All right. Others believe that I find, and I believe I bring to God, and so on. God will convince me. But when I find, God will say, it's this person. Whatever is your belief system, we're not looking at that today. Whatever you believe, which is approved by God, will work for you. We're going to look at that on another day. Now, the second thing is time. Time. 
time waits for nobody, they say in English. Time waits for nobody. So a major issue in missing one's bus in life, not only in marriage, because what we're talking about, this, generation, this partner is just not just marriage. A major issue, why a reason why people miss their bosses in life is time. Time waits for nobody. You know, time is a very important issue. And then if you listen to what I wrote, say, so, you know, so either that one, you went to the bus stop. How does time work? How does time affect us? Either you went to the bus stop for marriage, if it's marriage or whatever, too early. And you stayed there and became frustrated. <laughs> and become, because of frustration, you decided to choose any bus there or you went back home. Say nothing is happening here. You went back home. Or you decided, just let me say, you chose any bus available. Mm -hmm. Okay, like they do. And people say, oh, want to come to uh, Europe, like with some African brothers. They are trying, they, some of them pass through the Mediterranean Sea and all the rest of them, and some are drowning there. You know, pass through from one country to the other. You know the story is on news, so we don't have all the time. So you say, I want, let me, let me try this, let me try this, let me try this, let me try this. As you are trying them, you know what? That's taking the wrong bus. When you take the wrong bus, well, because you were there too early, you didn't wait for God. You were there too early. So what happens? By the time you realize that you've made a mistake, by the time you realize that you are in the wrong bus, definitely what you would like to do is to run back you run back to the bus stop. By the time you are back to the bus stop, you discover that you, you might have missed your bus. Your bus would have come and might have gone. And what will happen? That's a big problem on its own. Now, a second problem that time, a second way time works against us is when people automatically, when you go to your bus stop late or your, your what is it called, airport late, you have the chances of missing the bus or missing the flight will likely naturally be up to 90%, except God helps you. So if you wake up late, yeah. you say, oh, no, no, it's not. When people are asking you for your hand, they say, no, 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 not time. Yeah, think, I'm going to school. Oh, I'm you going to work. Oh, I'm going to do this. Oh, I'm going to do that. You know, people are asking your hand in marriage. If you're a lady, you know, if you're a man, that is who would have accepted you, loved you, are there. You see, I say, I'm building. Oh, I'm doing this one. Oh, I'm working. Oh, by the time you are now ready, you discover that the ladies that should be at your class, they're no longer there again. There's no one that you are loving again. There's no one that you are accepting. There's no one that's accepting you. Before you know it, you are 40, you're 45. You are still struggling to get the best. And sometimes what has happened is that people have said, okay, let me take one. We're going to see that at the end. <laughs> and at the end, you are in trouble. So that's what hard time affects you. Third one is impatience. This is very 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 important in life not just in marriage impatience impatience it has destroyed many it has marred the destiny of many it has even they altered the destination of many yes impatience have altered the destination of many it has messed up many impatience has messed up many and you know one thing about impatience <laughs> It has, it has made many to jump into what they will live the rest of their lives to regret. Listen, I will repeat. Impatience have made many to jump into what they will live the rest of their lives to regret. No matter how, and no matter how you try to remedy it, you, the person will live the rest of his or her life to regret impatience. So please, this, you have to be careful with impatience. Very, very dangerous. You have to be careful in every aspect of your life. If it's marriage, if it's business, if it's even career. You know, those days we're growing up in school, some people want to read medicine. Say, oh, uh, well, as medicine is not actually working out, let me go to school and start health science. After that, I switch over to medicine. Oh, some people wanted to read accountants to say, oh, we've got to start a business. So finally, finally, they didn't switch over. Today, now they are struggling. Yeah, because that's not where they were supposed to be. A small patience of one, two years more to do an entrance exam would have helped you. That's, that's there. So we're talking about every aspect of life here. Yeah. Now, let's now come to marriage and answer the question on ground. What if I have missed my boss? Today, this is a very critical topic. I'm sure that many people might not want to delve into it because you might not have, but um, we're in, 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 in it already. What if I have missed my boss? Two areas. Number one, 
the person I'm living with now, I have come to know people are around, everybody, family members, friends, everybody attests to the fact that I really made a mistake in marriage. I have made a mistake. I have really made a mistake. What can I do? I don't know if you're hearing this message. You're asking that. What, what is what can what should I, I do? This bus? What should I do? What should I, I leave this room. bus that I am in now? This, this flight room. that I'm in now. I've, it's a wrong flight. Should I jump down from the air? I, just... I mean, on air. I mean, the bus. Should I run down? Now, the second part of it is, I have. I, what if I've missed my right person? I've missed my bus. Now I'm single. I'm not married. And the bus is not coming. Out. No I've bus is coming. What should I do? I have. Been, I know I've missed the right person. What should I do? Now let's give you some. Let's try and provide some. You know, provide some answers by the Holy Ghost, and I'm sure that the answers. Because it's the Holy Ghost that is giving them, it's going to help. At the end, please ask your questions. And then you can also make your contribution. You're free. Number one, if you are married, now let's talk to the married first. It's a singles and married day. So let's talk to the married first. Then we'll come to the singles and conclude with that. So if you are married, let me say this. Separation and divorce should not be the first thing. Let me repeat. If you're married, you are in marriage, Separation and divorce should not be the first thing you do. But you know what? Some people mishandle it, mishandle it at this point, you know, thinking that that is the solution. Oh, he's not, she's not in my right person. I'm having issues. So I'm, I have walked out of the marriage immediately without thinking about anything. No, no, no. Separation and divorce should not be the first thing. And the question would be, so if it's not, should it shouldn't be the first thing. So what should I do? So the first thing to do is patience. Remember I talked about impatience a few minutes ago. The same patience that you should you refuse to have that landed you into this, this particular relationship now, if you're married, that patience you refuse to have, you must not have it in order to fix this problem. Yes. You now need that patience. You need it. Why? Because Malachi 2 16 clearly states that God says, I hate divorce, say yet the Lord. So, divorce, like people are doing today, is now raining everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Divorce and separation shouldn't be the first thing. Remember, we're going. The second thing is, so since the divorce shouldn't be the first thing, what should I do? Accept your mistake. Own it up. Accept your mistake. And ask God for his mercy and his help. Then depend on God to show you the way out. Let me repeat. Accept your mistake. The main reason why people keep making mistakes I was hearing somebody, she said, she was talking about, she said, a teacher anyway, people listening to them, you know, and she said, she was in, I think the third or fourth marriage, as the case might be, okay, all right, now, now, why people make mistakes in marriage, they make the first mistake, they make the second mistake, and sometimes they even make the third mistake, is this problem of not accepting their mistake? Not accepting their mistake. You need to accept your mistake. That I was the one who made the mistake. Don't blame your father. Don't blame your mother. Don't blame situations. Don't blame condition. Don't blame your friend. Don't blame the man for luring you. Don't blame the woman for, uh, for seducing you. Don't blame him for using his money to confuse you. Don't blame the woman for using her body to lure you. And then you be, she became pregnant. Then you started marrying her. No. That is... That is throwing the blame to another person. And you will still make another, you will still make the mistake again. See, you will make the mistake again because if it was a woman who seduced into marrying her, another woman will still seduce into marry, marrying her. If it was a man who used his money to deceive, think, according to you, to make you marry him, you another one will still bring a bigger money and you will marry the person. So that's not the issue. The issue is for you to accept the mistake. You know, one of the things I do for myself, I tell, I'm teaching my children, is that I own, what if I make any mistake any day, any time, I own it up. I tell you, I made this mistake. I failed here. And I am sorry. That's the first way. That's the first way for you to be free 
for making the second mistake because you know you wouldn't be ready to apologize the second time because you're not ready to apologize the second time you want to do the, the thing right the second time that's that so accept your mistake and ask god to show you mercy and help you that let him now show you the way out if he says that the way out is suppression go ahead and suppress if he says that the way out is for you to be patient there, now you have to be patient. If he says that the way out is for you to stay apart, so that because you have children now, you now do whatever be the way out that God wants you to take, you now take it. But I'm sure God will not tell you to divorce because God says he hates divorce. So anybody who is teaching divorce anywhere is not, is not biblical. God says, I hate it. So that's by the way. So that's outside it. So ask God, accept the mistake and ask him to show you mercy. Ask him to help you and ask him to help you to fix the problem and show you the way out. Yeah. You know, it is like you said, you know, accepting one's fault is very important mm. at this point because you must have done a personal reflection about yourself. Mm -hmm. How did I get here? Mm -hmm. What happened to me? Mm -hmm. You should be able to know what happened to you and how you got there. You know, if we cannot come to that point of knowing where we got to a point. Whenever it appears that we have missed our boss in life, not just marriage, mm -hmm. we cannot come to that point of knowing how we got ourselves into that mess. Mm -hmm. How did I get myself into this mess? What happened to me? You should be able to answer what happened to you, not like somebody did this to me. You should take it up, own, own it up. You know, it's your responsibility to take it upon yourself that you caused it. Mm. It is not a sign that God has left us. No. That we missed our boss is not a sign that God has left us. Like so many conclude, some persons even mock others that it's because God has left them. It's because God is no longer with them. That is why, you know, things happen. That's why this kind of thing, you know, befell them. No, mm -hmm. it is not a, It is not that God has forsaken us. It is not that God has stopped loving us. So we must know that at each point in time, we miss our boss in life, especially in marriage. Each time we got things wrong in our life, it is not God's fault. It is not that he has ceased loving us. Mm -hmm. It is not that he has forsaken us. Mm -mm. No, rather we should know that we left God. That's what brought us to where we are. We didn't do the right thing. At least understanding it from this point, this perspective, will help us fix it. Mm. Else it will be difficult to fix. Thank you. So why is it? Why am I stressing that separation and divorce is not actually, shouldn't be the first thing? The reason is because sometimes... The aftermath, the problems that follow separation and divorce are even bigger than the problems that caused it. Listen, I repeat, the, <laughs> people don't know. They jump into divorce anyhow. They jump into, and the, nobody is saying, the, you know, the people who want to go into divorce, they don't ask questions. What those who are there, what they have been through, and what the psychological effect, the problems in family and life, the rest of their lives. Sometimes the problems that follow divorce, the problems that follow separation, not just divorce, even sometimes separation, sometimes the problems that follow them are even worse. They're even worse than the problems that caused it. That is to say, it, is, it would have been easier for you to fix the problem mm -hmm. than the problem than, is, than fixing the problem that followed after the divorce. I'm telling you, and separation. Go ask questions. I don't have all the time. To give you all these examples, you can ask questions. Now, this, what is the third one? The third one now is, and the fourth one I stop. The third one is, do your best now to love him or her anyhow. I said, I added it. Do your best to love that person anyhow. What am I saying here? There was a love that was professed, the so called what? Fake love. It was a fake love. Now you now know it's a fake love. Mm -hmm. You it, if it actually made you to say yes or enter that marriage at that time, it means that no matter how fake it is, you can still build on it now. Somebody might not like what I'm saying, but it's true. Why is it so? Because love is a choice. Love in marriage is a choice. It is not just a feeling. You can if, what of people who enter, we're going to look at that baby, I think we'll discuss it. There are people who say, oh, I got my right person. But they are having problems in marriage today. Exactly. 
So that you, you have the right person doesn't mean that you, the marriage must be rosy. You still have to commit yourself, commitment. You still have to commit to it. Because marriage is all about commitment. You have to commit to it. Love is commitment. You have to commit. So if both of you, even though it looks like you are not the right, you are not compatible, okay? If you still commit to loving each other, at least you score up to 50, 60, 70% in, in success level, as far as marriage is concerned. Then let it be that the other things now will not be the things that where you can't change because of your nature, you jump into it. So you, you can build on this so-called so called uh, fake law. You can build on it and you can still keep going. Now, the, the fourth one, I don't know where I'm talking. The fourth one is you need God's grace. What is grace? Grace is bigger than people think it's unmerited favor. No, grace is at God's ability, God's strength in us to do what a human being cannot do. See, let me tell you, you can enter, you, if you have, I'm not talking to those who are outside marriage, oh, please. I'm talking to those who are already in marriage. Because God has divorced. You have children. What, how do you want them to feel? You know, so there is, because of these kids that are involved, especially if kids are involved, God's grace, if not for any other, for the sake of those kids, there is a grace that can come upon you, that can now help you. To love the person that oh, ordinarily you couldn't love, you know, do the things ordinarily you couldn't do. You know, those things that normally that this man or this woman is requesting for, is requiring from you, that is not part of your life, that is causing the problem. You say, oh, both of us are not compatible. God's grace cannot help you get it done. Because already I've, I remember I talked about mercy. If you have asked for mercy, oh, which brings you forgiveness, because you have accepted the mistake. You have said, God, I'm sorry. I was the one who jumped into this. I didn't listen to you. So today, I'm asking you for the grace to continue. Ask God for the grace to continue. He can help you. Then the final one, which we must say is, if you're married, is, however, if the, the, the matter becomes unbearable, I mean, what I won't mean unbearable is, if your life is at risk, mm -hmm. if your everything is at risk, then consider separation. There's no divorce. Consider separation there's no divorce because God hates divorce. If we are properly married, except if we are not properly married, if we are not properly married, that's a different thing. But if we are properly, properly married, God hates divorce. So consider separation, especially if kids are involved, because God still wants you to be alive. People want you to be alive so that the kids will not suffer. Go and ask those who lost their mom, those who lost their father, what they are going through. So God wants it. Wants you to be alive, so no need dying. Now, if you are not in marriage now, maybe let's let's use the word. If you are not in marriage now, so uh, it covers both who, those who are single and uh, those who are who say I have missed my boss, and those who are still growing up, younger ones who are growing up now. But today, singles are married for a day. Listen, your own case is more important. And well, all of them are important, but yeah. well, it's more important. It kind of yeah, important, because more important really because so that it's better for me that you didn't make the mistake. Mm -hmm. You didn't enter. So that's why I'm, most times I'm more giving to you who are singles, right? If you are, you are not in marriage yet, good for you. Your case is better. Mm -hmm. So even if you have missed your right person, ask God for a second chance. That is, if you were the one who made it to happen, you missed the person. Because we are thinking, oh, you had your standards or your reasons. Mm -hmm. Ask God for a second chance. Mm -hmm. He's a merciful God. He can show you mercy. Mm -hmm. That's point number one. Point number two is patience is very important here. The God we are serving is the God that wants us to have patience. Patience is very important. And there's a scripture that backs that up. I'm just going to read it very soon. And then we are done, I'm done for today. Patience is very important. The God we serve is the God of 11th hour. What he gave to people at the first hour, he can still give it to you at the 11th hour. But if only you are patient, if you are patient, if you are patient, he can still do it. I want to read, I want to read um, a scripture. Why is this so? When God gives you that same blessing, the, the, the effect of the delay and the, what you missed might not even be felt at the long run. So listen carefully as I read this scripture. Matthew chapter 20, 1 to 16. But I will just speak a few verses and read 
and you understand what I mean. Now, for the kingdom of heaven, Jesus told this story by himself, and that's why I'm comfortable to use it. Jesus, the, for the kingdom of heaven, is like unto a man that is a, an has holder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his uh, vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and, and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. The marketplace. I was talking, say something about that here. And say it unto them. How are you idle here? They said, because no one hired us. He asked them, go into my vineyard and walk. At the end of the day, I'm going to give you whatsoever that is right. Now, the most important verse is 6, 7, and, and that, that's the one we need. And about the 11th hour, he went out and found others standing idle and saying unto them, why stand you here all the day idle? They say it unto him. They say unto him, because no man hath hired us. He said unto them, Go ye into my vineyard, and whatsoever is right that is right, that shall ye receive. So when even was come, I'm reading King James, was come, the Lord of the vineyard saith unto the steward, Go the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the last. Mark that, beginning from the last. Unto the first. And when they came, that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny, just like those who were hired at the first hour. I will stop here. You can read the rest when you have time at home, please, maybe after this meeting. So the people who were hired at first were angry. Say, ah, how will you pay us what you paid the people who you hired at the eleventh hour, who have been working all day under the hot sun? Say, no. I decide what to do with my money. We agreed on one penny, and I've given you. I decided to pay these people this. So why did I bring this story? Even if your mates got married 10 years ago, even if your mates got married 10 years, 15 years ago, mm -hmm. listen, and you are marrying now, you have waited for the Lord, and you are marrying now, whatever in the long run, whatever they have achieved, you will still achieve it. Simple. That's what this scripture is showing us. Patience. Patience, you know what? They remember, they remained in the marketplace. They didn't leave the marketplace. That's why I told you I'm good. They didn't leave. They waited. Those who were hired at this third hour, that is the, and that's 9 a.m. They remained. Nobody hired them at the first time. Oh, the early, man, early, early ones who got married. Nobody. Ah, they were mocking you. They were laughing at you. Oh, they still remained. So at 9 a.m., they were they were married. Oh, these other people at 6 and 12 noon, they were married. These other people at 3 p.m., they were married. But these other people remained. They didn't hate God. They didn't walk away. They didn't do it their own way. They didn't try any other thing. They waited. They waited and waited for God. They waited until the 11th hour. Remember, one hour remaining for the day. They waited until the 11th hour. And you know what? The, the, the householder came, asked them, why are you here at this time? It's 5 p.m. You're not married. 5 p.m. of life, 5 p.m. of your life, you're not married. What, what are you doing here? I said, because nobody married us. Nobody married us. Say, okay, go ahead. Using that vineyard thing, they go into my vineyard and walk. You know what? They entered there. They still achieved what those who married at the first hour achieved. They achieved everything. Children and life, love, everything. They achieved all. So what am I saying in conclusion? Remember something. This God will serve is a God of mercy. So he can always help you and cover the gaps. So what is the warning which I'm stopping with today? Doing it your own way. Choosing whosoever you want. Accepting whatever that is available. And doing it at your own time. Wouldn't, shouldn't be your option because it's going to be likely have likely have a dead end. Only if you succeed. Let me repeat. 
and I stop today. Doing it your own way. Oh, because I have been delayed. Mm -hmm. Oh, because I have missed my I'm bus. Gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. Doing it your own way. <clears throat> Choosing whosoever you want. I want to choose whosoever I want. Now, nah, now that the person who should choose me, especially ladies, mm -hmm. have left me. Mm -hmm. Or oh, ladies, I'm a man. Doing it your own way. Choosing whosoever you want. Accepting whatever that is available. No. Since the, the, the desired is not available, let the available become the desired. No. <laughs> <laughs> Choosing whatever that is available. And doing it at your own time. Oh, I want it now. What should I be married in the next five years? What will I enjoy then? Doing it at your own time. I'm talking about those who have missed their bus, right? Remember? And the young ones coming up shouldn't be an option. Why? Because it's likely going to have a dead end. It's going to be destructive. So please, let it not be an option. I'll stop here. Hey. You know, you know the reason? Mixing our boxes in life. Uh, excepting it, happens, it hasn't happened to you, but if you have been a victim of mixing this box we're talking about, it mustn't be in marriage, it must also be, it can also be in another area of life. You agree with me that it comes with a lot of regret. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it comes with a lot of pains. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because of the disappointment that is involved, you know, there will be pains and, you know, shame, reproach, ridicule. People will ridicule you, people will reproach you, people will be mocking you. And when you remember all these things that are associated with mixing your bus, it's not a very good state for one to be in, you know? Many persons at this point, at this juncture, have taken their lives. Many have fallen into depression. Many people have gone into, you know, have thought and thought and then given themselves heartache. They have ended up harming their self, themselves because of mixing bus. I want you to know that it is not the end of the road. That you made one mistake, that it couldn't happen because of your fault, doesn't mean you should end it. It doesn't mean that it cannot be better again. It doesn't mean that God is not doesn't love you again. If you must know that God still loves you, he is waiting for you right at that point you missed that bus. God is still there waiting for you. Why at that point, that right at that point where that incident happened, where that thing happened to you, God is still there waiting for you. It's just a matter of can you be, can you, can you make up your mind to come, come back? Because what you need is just to come back to him. You've missed this bus. What do you do? If it's where they say this bus leaves at 7 in the morning and then you appear there by 7.30 or 7.15 and it happens that it's gone and that is all for the day, what do you do? Are you going to sleep, sleep in that bus stop? No, you will still have to come back and then make it earlier the next day. That's how it is. God may be waiting for you to come back to him and you don't want to come back. You're still there. Mourning over your loss. Every day you recount all that you have spent, everything that has transpired. Why should it have been? Why should it be you? After all this, you know, blaming yourself and blaming yourself and blaming others around you for the reason is not going to solve any problem. God expects you to come, you know? And that Hebrews, my beloved talked about, that in that thing is Hebrew 4, 16. You say, so let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. Mm -hmm. He said, it is there we will receive mercy. Mm -hmm. And it is there we will find the grace to help us when we need it most. I am telling you, right at that moment, you need that grace most. Mm -hmm. But can you assess grace when you don't come? Mm -hmm. You have to come first before the grace <clears throat> will be made available to you. You have to come. When you come back to him, knowing that this is our God, Bible calls him in the book of Psalms, Bible says it's a very present help. In time of trouble, he's ever present. There is no time God is not with us. Mm. He's only that we will leave him, and then when we live where he is, we won't find him. Mm. Then it will be as if he's not there. He's ever present help. So if we can come back, he is there. He wants us to come back. Why do we need to come back? Do you know that our physical health and our spirit spiritual health is very, very important than even the marriage you want you want to marry, mm. than the job you want to get. Because if you don't have your physical health intact and your spiritual health, what, what can you make out of life without health, both spiritually and physically? And then the spiritual controls the physical. So if something happens to you, you don't just have to look at it. You have to look at it both, both ways. What caused this? 
there are some spiritual implications. Where did you miss it? That's why you have definitely need to come back to God and you definitely need to look unto him for the next step. You won't just move. Mm. Should I go back there, Father? That's after you have returned. Mm. You must come back to him to ask questions. How did I get it wrong? He will open your eyes to see where you mixed it. He can tell you, mm, is this thing, this anger? Is this impatience, you know? Mm. It is because of your, your quest for wealth, mm. or your high taste. Yeah. He will tell you what the problem is. Arrogance. And then he will help you fix yeah. it. Yeah. You will give him time. Allow God to work on you. Allow him. Don't, don't just give him time. Okay, God, now that I have come back, if I don't get married in the next in one year, one year then, <laughs> no. Or you force yourself into church because many persons are in the church today yeah, because they want to point. get married. Mm. They just want to get a woman, a man, and then marry and settle down. Not really because they are there to serve God. God. And God sees their hearts. You cannot deceive God. Even though you can deceive your pastor, you can deceive the congregation. So you can also be in church for years. But what is the motive why you're in that church? Mm. Is it because you now want to get married? You are, you are feeling that you have missed your boss. Now you want it right. You now need a job. You now remember God. After he gives you, you run away again. We must get it right at this point. If we can't get it right, then we continue to make the mistake. The mistake will keep on going on and on and on. Hmm. Some persons have married three husbands and yet it didn't work. Hmm. So do you not see I'm that it was not wives. even three wives? Uh -huh. Do you not see that it was not even the fault of the first one? Yeah. They didn't still get something right. Mm -hmm. And if you don't get it right, you will keep marrying and marrying and marrying. Yeah. It's not all about acquiring. You can't acquire wives and husbands. They are not properties, you know, mm -hmm. you can boast of. You just have to marry and then get it right. Do it well. Like my beloved said, that you have missed it in marriage is not doesn't mean that it cannot be fixed. It doesn't mean that both of you cannot find love. Mm. If fake love can bring you together, then real love can hold you yeah. in it. If you try and get the real one, it can help you. It can keep it for you. Yeah. If fake love can make you find a woman, fall for a woman, mm. then real love can make you keep him or her. Only you make up your mind. It's your choice. It's your decision to, 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 to determine that I'm going to love this guy, mm -hmm. irrespective of how he is, who he is, and then pray to God for help. Mm -hmm. And God will help you. Yeah. Because it's our very present help. Because that trouble is there. God knows that this, this person is difficult. God knows that this person doesn't want to change. He knows that person is like that. He has that kind of heart. Mm -hmm. And the heart of the king is in his hand. So is it not when I do the right thing, then the heart of the person I'm complaining about, God will fix it. But when I don't want to do my part, I want God to do his part. And it's as if we are rubbing shoulders. God, if you don't change him, then me, I will not change. Let me start by changing myself. If God has seen me that I have changed, then there is nothing he can't do by changing. It's not anything for him. It's nothing for him to change the person, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's not like I have missed my birth and then I should get out of this marriage. It's not the solution. When you get out of the marriage, what about the kids that are involved? Mm. They go through a lot emotionally, psychologically, and it's affecting them in every area of their lives. And you yourself, you're not living a happy life. How can you be lonely? The Bible says two are better than one. Mm -hmm. Why will you even choose the lonely part? It's not easy on those who are alone. Those who are single, they're not finding it easy. Mm -hmm. Some are taking their own lives because it's not easy, but they won't tell you the truth. Some people are out there to discourage others. When they have any complaint, they tell them, ah, leave him or her. Just leave the marriage. My dad, you are better off when you are alone. You are not better off when you are alone because God cannot be a liar. Two are better than one. Mm -hmm. Two are better than one. The man know. cannot be more right than God. Yes. <laughs> you know, and that is why there are so many coldness. You are cold, you are alone, you are lonely. Because how will you be warm when there is cold? When you are alone, you know? Well, how can you bear the burdens of kids alone? As after you haven't lived with children alone, just three kids alone I spent how many years with? I know how tough it is. Mm. You know? Then I imagine people who, who said they are making it alone. You know, people should stop deceiving others. Tell others the truth. Yeah. It is not easy to be out there alone without both, both you know, spouses. spouses yeah. You need each other. You need each other to be able to be there for those kids and for them to form emotionally, psychologically, physically, academically, spiritually, all around formation. They need both of you to be there. And that is why we must have to ask God for help when we have missed it. God is there to help us fix it. He's here to give us ideas on how to handle that difficult lady, that difficult man. God gives us the secret. He gives us the code. But are we willing to submit ourselves to him to direct our path? Are we willing to commit it into his hand? Do we trust him that much? Do we think he loves us, you know, enough to help us? He loves us. He's a loving father. He's a gracious God. He doesn't judge us, you know. 
you are sorry. You tell him you are sorry and he forgives our sins and remembers them no more. The only person that can do it, only God can forgive us and remember our sins no more. He won't. He will wipe them away. But a man can still record for you. Recall any day you come back. But God is not like that. Mm. So why don't we hand it over to him? We have missed our boss. We have made mistakes. We own it up. Tell God. Bring him in. And then he will help us and give us ideas on how to fix it. Mm. Thank you, baby, for throwing more light. I don't know if you have any questions or comments. Yeah, I'm reading it out already. Okay. So we have one, some on a few on a Facebook. Whatever be your contribution, you can write it now. If you have questions, ask, and then we can answer them. And Stella said, um, it is not and never should be an option for either the man or the lady. It is a painful journey. So that's what she's trying to uh, add to buttress the point that I can, should to, to singles who want to jump in, make it anyhow. I want to do it my own way. I've missed the first person, so let me not try this. Mm. Let me not get the second person. Some even say God has. I've been waiting for God to show me and to mm -hmm. direct me. He's not. He not. So let me do it my own way. No. So that still is saying that it is not and never should be an option for either the man or the woman. It is a painful journey. When you enter this, ask questions before you do whatever you want to do. Then he said, she said again, say, uh, bringing the scripture, I think it's Roman, say, patient, patient in wisdom and circumspectly wait in, on God. So, so it's painful. You know, your mates are married. You were married five years ago. And then you are here. Some of their kids are already in school. It you know, matter, okay? you are feeling it. it you know, matter. some of them even make you, some of, if, 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 of them even make you feel like, mm -hmm. like you, 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 you want nothing. No. You know, what happens in our generation is that those who are your mates, when they have money and you don't have money, mm, look as if they make it look like you are the sinner, they are the sinner here. Yeah, the so, devil. Okay. That's why so those who got married earlier, those who went to school earlier, those who got, especially even if, even at your workplace, you know, those who, who got promotion earlier, you know, they tell you we know the way. If you're a Christian, they say it's because of your Christianity and so on and so forth. So it is natural. It must surely come up. It must surely come up. So just be patient and wait upon God. All right. Somebody say, Lucky says, bitter truth must be told. So if you have any question, you ask us. Otherwise, we're going to pray right now. Please take note. Go back. Share this message. Please share it on Facebook, YouTube, and your WhatsApp. Just share it. Make people see it. People are jumping out of marriage. Say, oh, because I missed, I, I'm with the wrong person. Some also younger ones want to even jump in. Say, oh, he left me. She left me. So let me choose. Some or even jump into church, like baby girl said, jump into church. Please take it easy. Please take be it easy. careful. Don't let be anybody careful. push you. Don't let anybody. People Don't, are mocking, society, laughing, no, and so doing bad. every other thing mm -hmm. to make you look like you are the failure here. You are not. Some family members can worsen it. Yeah. Family members can worsen it. Parents can even, some parents can be bad. Don't no, give no, that's them not, the chance. Do not allow anybody to push you ahead. One thing you must know from the scripture we read is that if you missed your boss, especially if you are out of marriage, right? You are not in marriage now, please. You missed your boss. You have accepted your mistake. You've asked God for mercy and forgiveness. And you have asked him to help you fix this problem, then this you must be, can be sure that this God of the eleventh hour, who visited people both at the at the nine and twelve and three p.m. and even the five p.m. can still visit you. Of course, it sure. can visit you. And when he visits he you, he doesn't come late. Okay, he doesn't come late. Mm -hmm. So and when he visits you, he restores everything. He, he blesses and he restores. And it will, if such that the gaps will you, not even be felt it. within 10, 20 years. You won't feel it. I tell you. you. Nobody will feel the gap. Nobody will even know that these people married much earlier because, okay, look at the Bible. If I must refer you to the Bible, does it not touch you that Jacob married early? You know, Leah had children. The other wives had, the only person who didn't have children on time was Rachel. And when she had, she had Joseph. And now, that Joseph was still the one that God invested so much wisdom that he was the one that God used to save the posterity of, it, not just Israel, for the rest of the world at that time. Look at it. When they, you know, one of these that fear me, when they appeared to him in Egypt, they called him my Lord. 
which means he was not looking smaller than them, oh no younger than them. Despite he was the, the gap. Despite the gap, the, the children of the first son was as old as him. So, so but they, they called him my lord. They called him, they called him, they called him my lord. You know, what I call language. They called him my lord. Everything, he still had his own children and they had their own children. Please be patient. So be, be patient. patient. Okay. Now, if you are in marriage already, Stay be, jumping patient. Out, be patient. Jumping be out patient. of marriage is not, the, it's not even the best thing. So you ask the Lord at this time, please, Father, what is the way out? Now that you accept your mistake. I was the one who made the mistake. I married the wrong person. <laughs> Say, God, it's me. It's not my mother. It's not my father. Help me. Can God, help, help me? me. Can you help me? Can. Show me mercy and give me grace. He will give you the grace. Yeah. We'll stop here today. Share this message to people. Let them see it and also be delivered. But pray for us. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for helping us come to this point of knowing what to do. We will have missed our buses. Lord, we pray for our single ones, especially those who have actually mixed it in marriage. And it appears as if the world is mocking them right now. Some of them have committed themselves to you and they are asking you this question god when will it be my turn when will my next brothers arrive mm. having waited this long and i'm still waiting is there any more hope for me father will pray for them mm -hmm. that you grant them that grace amen to continue to wait upon you lord mm -hmm. and that lord in no distant time my father lord. you will send them their own yes lord that their joy may be fulfilled amen. Oh, lord amen. father will pray for those who are already marriages that it is not easy. It is not possible for them to back out right now because of how far they have gone. Kids are already involved. A lot of things are involved. My father, we pray that you help them. Mm -hmm. Draw them closer, oh God, and teach them. Open their eyes to see the good aspect of the persons they are living with right now. Mm -hmm. That they begin to look and relate with them on those from those good sides. And Lord, from there, you begin to work out your purpose in their lives. Father, strengthen them, mm. encourage them. Mm -hmm. Lord, please be there for them. Yes, you are very present help in time of trouble. Be mm -hmm. there for them, Lord. As they call upon you, may you answer them. Mm -hmm. May you help them. Teach them what to do to fix it, oh God, that they will continue, Lord, to, they will find love. They will find real love mm -hmm. in that relationship that they will be able to move forward. Yes, Lord. Father, the ones who have missed it in careers, in jobs, in opportunities in life, by the reason of their lifestyles, Father, we pray. As they return to you, that you help them. Mm -hmm. As they come back to you, that Lord, you show them the right way. Mm -hmm. Teach them what to do, oh God, mm -hmm. that they will not make a second mistake. Yes, Lord. Father, you are the God of a second chance. Mm -hmm. Give them second chances, oh God. Thank you, so as many that are asking for second chance, Father, give them second chance. Yes, Lord. Lord, grant them your mercy. Mm -hmm. You are not like a man, oh God. May you receive them and bless them. Yes. May you, Lord, grant them restoration. Yes, Lord. Restore to them, O oh God, all that they have lost. Mm -hmm. You promised to restore all the years the locals have eaten up, mm -hmm. the canker ones, the palmer ones, Father, restore unto these ones. Mm -hmm. Everything they have lost, O oh God, that they will no longer be a mockery, they will no longer be a shame, they will mm -hmm. no longer be a reproach, mm -hmm. that your name alone will be glorified. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you've not given your life to Jesus, You can do it now. In fact, when Jesus it comes into your life, in both sides, the fixing has started. He will start helping you. So can you put your hand on your chest and say, Jesus, thank you for dying for me. I know that I'm a sinner. And I also know that you have washed my sins. You have paid the price. Forgive me today. Receive me as your own. Give me your, the power of your Holy Spirit. Let me be born again. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray for all that are, have surrendered their lives to you right now. We pray, Lord, that you visit them with your mercy. Wash them clean with your blood. We pray, Lord, that you will give them the strength and the power to be your children. Those who are having issues in marriage, those who are having issues with marriage, because they have come to you now. Now take over the burden. The Bible says, come unto me. You say we should come. Now that they have come to you, lift up the burdens from them and give them rest. Thank you, our Father, for answer. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. We pray for all other marriages, Lord, out there. Those who are married well, those who are living well, all other single ones on this special day. We pray that, Lord, you will strengthen those who are already, already married, that they will begin to... 
They will continue to love their spouses more and more. And let peace reign in every marriage. Okay. Yeah. Let healing be reign. Those reign, reign, oh God. Those who are, that are drowning, let them be saved. Let them be delivered. Mm -hmm. Now we pray for the younger ones, the singles, on this special day for them, oh God. Those who are, they are not yet missed anyone, but they are still waiting for you. They are still in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Father, we pray that you visit them mm -hmm. with speed. Mm -hmm. Lord, those who are growing up as things, Lord, the fire of you know, exuberance is there. Lord, we pray that you will help them not to jump into mistakes. Mm -hmm. Help them, hold them tight, oh God. Mm -hmm. We pray, Lord, that everyone that has listened to us, everyone that is here, part of this ministry, part of this, oh God, network, Father, they will not, not make any mistake. Mm -hmm. Those in marriage, they will not see trouble. Mm -hmm. Lord, we pray for peace to reign, direction to reign. Thank you, Abba yes, Father, for answer. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' gracious name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. If you are within an around Saskatoon, please join us tomorrow at Saskatoon Field House Meeting Room 3 for our service. Time is 10.30 a.m. Uh, Saskatchewan time and 5 p.m. Nigerian time. God will bless you as you'll be there. Somebody wrote something? Did you read? Yeah, thank you so much. All right, we appreciate so you, sir. Thank you. God bless you. See you again next week. Yeah. Bye. Happy weekend. <laughs>